My boys. All right, I am super confused right now. God damn it, I sliced myself with the utility knife. And then the final close up, I can turn the sink on and it passes water. Pretty solid. Something that is super exciting and different than my last van, because I used the inch and a quarter pipe, is what is up guys 70 savage here coming at you with a very exciting video today today we are starting a massive project the entire plumbing slash water system in the van if you are new to the channel we are currently converting this van right here to be the ultimate zombie apocalypse survival vehicle we have done everything in this van 100 diy we've made all of the cabinetry we did all the electrical we still have to build things like the entire bathroom a shower but pretty soon we are going to have really high chances of surviving the zombie apocalypse i'd love to stand here and pretend i have the perfect plan for exactly how we're going to build this plumbing system right now but the reality is i don't we're going to be figuring out a lot of how this is going to work along the way let's go ahead and dive right in so to give you guys some context of where we are going to be working our water system is located in the back of the van here on the driver's side so far we've built the structure of where all of the water system components are going to live out of these 8020 aluminum extrusions. We've actually built the entire van out of these aluminum 8020 extrusions. They are insanely strong, and there's an entire video on how we built this van's skeleton. First component, one of the most important ones, is this water tank here. This is actually a 32 gallon over wheel well water tank. It's super cool. It's built to fit over the top of the wheel well, which is right below here. What that means is you save a ton of space on the inside of your van. And the main reason we have it inside of the van instead of outside of the van, like we will have for our gray water tank, is because we don't want it to freeze in cold conditions. There is a link to this water tank in the video description below. So what we have laid out here are actually almost all of the components that you need for a functioning water system in an RV or in a van like this. We have our filtration system. This is very important if you're going to be getting water from unknown sources. Ours is a three-stage water filtration system from Clear Source. I'll put a link to this in the description below. We are also using a pretty beefy SureFlow water pump. Runs at 55 PSI and it has four gallons per minute. So hopefully this thing has some very solid water pressure when we get it hooked up. Then we have the accumulator which connects to the water pump and just keeps the pressure and the lines consistent so that the pump is only running when it needs to be running. For those of you who are new to vans and RVs, the difference between fresh water and gray water, there's also black water, is pretty important. The fresh water is the stuff that you're actually consuming and using for showers, cooking, etc. So the amount of water in your freshwater tank is really the amount of water that you have to use. The gray water tank is the used water that comes out of your shower, out of your sink, anytime you're doing dishes, anything like that. That's the tank that we are going to be putting below the van. And then some builds do have a black water tank. We're not going to have one in this build. The black water is what happens when you go to the bathroom and need to store that water somewhere. So the very first actual work that we are going to do right now is mount all of this hardware inside of the cabinet so that we can get ready to start connecting hoses. My favorite reward, the whole sauce sandwich. Ugh. We have drilled a couple of holes in the water cabinet here. Since this hole right here is only going to have the one big drain hose, I'm gonna seal around it permanently with polyurethane. But this one right here is gonna have wires and pipes of a variety of shapes and sizes going in. And I wanna be able to pull things in and out of this if I need to add more electronics or something like that. So I use the same rubber boot with aluminum and then foam in between as I did for the electrical. If you want a little bit more detail on how I made these, I covered that in the electrical video. I can give you guys the rundown here. So we have our water tank, which we have drilled a couple of holes in, one of which is a mistake. We tried to patch it with some epoxy and that actually didn't work. So I'm gonna come up with another method. What I ended up doing was taking a piece of plastic and a piece of neoprene rubber, drilling some holes in them and i'm going to use it as a patch by screwing it into the water tank at this point we are ready to start doing the real plumbing and start putting pipes together so first i want to start off with the different types of pipe that i'm going to use in this build in this build we are using the latest and greatest in plumbing technology and it's called propex or opener 
or Pex A. There's a few different names for it. They all mean the same thing. I was actually introduced to Pex A or Upener from Humble Road, which is another awesome van channel. I know a lot of you guys already watch and are subscribed to him, but if you haven't, highly recommend it. Propex tubing is gonna be great for all of our hot and cold water lines. Anything that's pressurized, I wanna use this tubing for. The next type of tubing that I'm going to be using is this ID tubing. It is basically a vinyl flexible tubing. And the main benefit of this stuff is that it is indeed flexible. It's really easy to navigate around all of the tight corners in the van. I'm gonna be using this primarily for like drain lines and anything that's not pressurized. These right here are the few different types of fittings that we're gonna be using to connect these pipes together. And believe it or not, this is actually most of the fittings that exist in common plumbing applications. The first one I'm gonna start with are the Propex or Upener fittings. That's what these ones are right here. These barbed tips are specially made so that when you expand that Propex and put it onto one of these fittings, it contracts and creates a really, really secure seal. These barbs can only be used to connect Propex to Propex to Propex. Now what you see on this one is that it is Propex on one side and it is pipe on the other side. This is also a pipe fitting that I've used previously and has some tape left over on it. This is the most common type of fitting that you will see. You can buy these at your local hardware store and almost every other type of fitting converts back into pipe fitting. You're gonna see these labeled as MPT or NPT. What they are is a threaded type of fitting that has a gradual increase in slope so that when you twist it into the female side, they get tighter and tighter. And when you combine it with something like this tape, it creates a nice watertight seal. So with all of these different types of fittings here, whether it be garden hose, Propex, compression, ID tubing, we're all going to bring them back to pipe at some point. Next up, we have garden hose fittings. This one right here is a kind of quick connect style garden hose fitting that you might use for a water inlet when you wanna fill your water tank with a garden hose. It looks like pipe fittings because it does indeed have threads, but it's not tapered in the same way that pipe threads are tapered. They're also not the same size thread, so they will not interact with a pipe fitting. You will not get a watertight seal if you try and connect a garden hose fitting to a pipe fitting. Next up, we have our ID tubing fitting. That's that flexible vinyl tubing we just talked about. Now this is a really big one because this is for my inch and a half drain pipe. So we're gonna be putting the ID tubing over this fitting and then using a clamp, cinching it down. This elbow right here goes from ID tubing to ID tubing. So like I mentioned before, we also have these that go from ID tubing to pipe. Now this is big pipe, this is inch and a half pipe, but this is how we're gonna go from the port on the water tank to the ID tubing so that we can navigate it out of the van. Lastly, we are gonna be using compression fittings. We're only gonna be using these in one place. Compression fittings have a little rubber gasket on the inside of them so that when you tighten them down, the male piece pushes up against that rubber gasket and creates a nice watertight seal. They are threaded as well. Once again, threads are not compatible with pipe threads. They do make compression to pipe the same way they make ID to pipe, garden hose to pipe, and Propex to pipe. You're gonna see compression fittings on your faucet. Almost all faucets use these. That's actually the only place that we're gonna be using compression fittings. The tape that I like to use for pipe fittings is this blue monster stuff. It's kind of like a more advanced version of regular plumbers tape that you can get at the hardware store. Easier to work with. I find it makes a better seal. I will typically pull about a 10 inch section or so and make six or so wraps around the fitting that I want to tighten. Link to this stuff in the description below. Now there are a few different tools that you are going to use for plumbing. The nice thing about plumbing is that you really don't need that many of them. In our case, we have our pipe cutters. We got a couple of different wrenches here to tighten down our pipe fittings. And then in our case, we have the expansion tool that's gonna to be used for all of our Propex pipe. This is where the magic happens on Upener fittings or Propex fittings. These are pretty expensive and that is the main drawback of the Propex system is you have to buy one of these things. In my opinion, buy once, cry once. Hopefully that overview will clear things up when we actually go in and start putting things together. I wanna to get into a little bit more detail as to how Propex works. By the way, the red and the blue are exactly the same material. They're literally just different colors to indicate hot and cold. Couple of main advantages to Propex. The first one being the freeze resistance. I think it can hold up to 600 PSI. Don't quote me on that. I'll put it on the screen if I mess that up. Second off, this is much more flexible than regular PEX 
tubing, which is fantastic when you are in the van trying to make it around all of those tight corners. If you do kink this stuff, you can just take a heat gun and heat it back up and it is back to 100% of its original strength. The fittings are easily removable. All you have to do is heat them up with a heat gun, cut them with a knife, and then you're ready to go if you need to put another fitting back on. It's super fast and convenient to work with when you have one of these PEX expander tools. I'll get into that in a second. And lastly, even though there's an extremely high PSI threshold when you put these fittings on, they're still able to rotate freely. Having fittings that can rotate freely is such a nice thing to have, especially in a van. Even though a ton of professional plumbers are adopting the Propex system, it's not mature enough to be available in regular hardware stores yet. I had to order all of this online. I'll put a link to the expansion tool and all of the Propex stuff that I use in the description below. So let's do a quick demo of actually putting some of this pipe onto one of the fittings. Cut off a small piece here. How this works is you have your pipe, you have your fitting, and then you have the sleeve that goes over the pipe and acts as the kind of contraction agent. Great thing about these is they have little stoppers at the end, so it's easy to just stick them on and they stop at the perfect spot every time. Once we've done that, we can simply take our tool, put it in, and since this is half inch pipe, we wanna expand it about seven to eight times. Once we've done that, time is of the essence, and you just shove it onto the fitting and hold it there for a few seconds. And after only a few seconds, that contraction magic happens and you have an extremely strong connection that you are never going to be able to rip off with your bare hands. Pretty darn simple, which is part of the reason why I picked it. And this is the primary thing that we're gonna be using in the van. The very first connection that we are going to do is the gravity drain. We used a one and a half inch pipe male fitting to barbed adapter for our one and a half inch vinyl tubing here. And then we ran one and a half inch vinyl tubing out through the bottom. Once again, we got the hose clamps on that vinyl tubing to make sure it's nice and watertight. And then it comes out underneath the van in that two inch hole right there, comes down, takes an elbow into this ball valve, which just opens and closes it if you've never seen a ball valve in your life. This is a pipe threaded PVC ball valve that we did have to use adapters to go from pipe to barbed. And then we ended it off with just this little spigot that faces downward so it doesn't spray like into the body panels here. I wanted to keep the same stealth look that I did for my shore power adapter right there where you can't see it unless you're looking for it and everything's kind of hidden and recessed underneath the van. So if you do want to use this gravity drain to drain out the fresh water tank, you kind of just bend down right here, stick your arm underneath and twist it around. So now we have the ability to drain this fresh water tank, whether that be for winterization so it doesn't freeze or just to flush out the whole system if we ever want to clean it. I use this surprisingly often in my last van just to get a fresh tank of water in there before a new trip. Next up, we are going to start on the biggest project of them all. The actual output of the water tank into the pump and then broadcasted throughout the van. So step one, we need to pull out this plug and get the first pipe connected to the input side of the water pump. So even though we've only made our first two connections here, there's two very important things that I wanna highlight. First off, we have a plastic tank. Anytime you have a plastic female side, you need to make sure that the male side is also plastic. You cannot put a brass male into a plastic female because since there's tapered, that will crack the inside of the female fitting. That is why I have a male to male plastic connector here. And then we go onto the brass here. And there we go. Our very first connection is done. It basically goes out, around, up into this sediment filter. This sediment filter is going to catch anything physical in the tank that might damage the water pump. The sediment filter comes with the water pump actually. And then it goes into our water pump. So at this point, everything forward is about to be pressurized. My initial reactions to using Propex are that this stuff is actually borderline fun. It is night and day difference to all of the other plumbing that I've done. I also just realized that I forgot to put a master on off valve at the start of this system if we ever need to shut the water off for any reason. All right, so I kind of just went hams on this part here, but we have actually completed the entire rest of the fresh water system. Everything after this pump is done. I want to give you guys a little bit of a close up so you can get more of an idea how it looks. That is the only piece of braided tubing I use in the entire pressurized side of the system and it just needed to bend really sharp so that's why I did it. We then go straight into the Propex fittings here 
where we go into the water filter, ignore these two for right now, through the water filter, out of the water filter, we have filtered cold water, which goes to three places. Part of it goes to the sink, which is this line right here. Part of it goes to the shower's cold water input, which I just have capped off at the top up there. And then the third output of this goes into the input side of the water heater because you need cold water if you wanna make hot water. And this clip is just a different angle so that you can come back and look at this if you're ever figuring out how to do your own plumbing. Another close-up angle here. And then the final close-up for the boys and the two girls who watch my channel. Shout out to the females building their own vans. Now, after this water heater is where these red lines come from, obviously. We also have three outputs on the hot water side. One of them is the hot water to the sink. One of them is the hot water to the shower, also just capped off right now. And the third hot water line is actually the safety valve in this hot water heater. So if this thing ever gets overpressurized and needs to let off some steam, we have this red wire that goes underneath the water filter here and just goes straight out through the bottom of the floor so that overpressured water just gets sprayed onto the ground. So for these two lines, the hot and cold water that go to the sink, they come underneath the floor here. They pop up out from this hole or these two holes. They come up through the back of this cabinet behind the fridge and they are attached to the sink. It's gonna be really hard to see because it's dark in here, so I apologize, but the sink has compression fittings. These lines right here, the black ones, come with the sink. They're attached to the sink directly. So I had to go compression to pipe to opener. And it's honestly as simple as that. At this point, I spent a few more hours with the Propex fittings and I still absolutely love it. It is by far the easiest and least stressful version of plumbing. So next we're going to hook up the freshwater tank breathing vent. This is going to prevent the pressure from going up inside the tank if we fill it with too much water and also prevent negative pressure like when you're draining the tank. All this is is simply a hose that's connected to the freshwater tank that vents somewhere outside of the van. So our air vent, which is this one right here actually goes up inside of the wall it goes all the way up there back down around and out the floor we have to make that thing high enough to retain the water while we're driving having this tall looped around version worked really well in my last van and i'll show you guys what it looks like underneath so this black fitting that's attached to the gray fitting is what's called a check valve i use check valves on almost everything that exits underneath the van what a check valve is it allows water to flow in one direction and not in the other direction. You can see this one has an arrow pointing here. So if I blow on the side that the arrow is pointing away from, air is allowed to go through, water would be allowed to go through as well. And if I go onto the other side, nothing can pass through that one. That was really awkward. So now out through the bottom, our air vent actually comes out right here, this small clear tube that you saw on top. It runs behind these other tubes. And then we have this awkward looking contraption here that's actually pretty useful. So we have two check valves on this, one check valve that allows flow this way and one that allows flow on the opposite way. It allows the tank to depressure and draw air in when it needs. And if there's overpressure or if you're overfilling the tank, it's gonna flow out the other side. Also prevents any road debris from getting in. We also put a check valve on the output side of our hot water safety valve when that thing overpressurizes because we don't want that road debris coming inside the van. On the outside of the van, those are still very low profile. They hang down about an inch or two. If you're not looking for them, you're probably not gonna see them and they're gonna stay out of the way when we're off-roading, which is important. We are gonna go straight to hooking up our gray water side of the system. Now, as I mentioned earlier, gray water is the wastewater that comes out of the shower and out of the sink and gets stored in the gray water tank. What that means now is we have to hook up our gray water pipe to the bottom of the sink. There are a couple of things to consider when you're making a gray water drain. I had to learn these ones the hard way. In my last van, I hooked up the entire gray water system with half inch tubing. It was the half inch flexible vinyl tubing. I got absolutely no flow from the sink into the gray water tank. The sink would just gather water and gather water and it would never actually drain. The inside diameter of the hose that you're using needs to be at least three quarter inch. I ended up using three quarter inch on my last van and it worked, but it drained very, very slowly. Water would gather in the sink faster than it would drain. 
Same thing with the shower and you had to wait a little while. I'm going with inch and a quarter here, which should be quite a bit better. And then thing number two, alongside the diameter of the hose that you're using, you wanna make sure that the hose is trending downward as much as possible. Anytime that you have a dip, a rise, and then a dip, it's really hard for the water to get over that dip. It requires a lot of water pressure and makes your drain much less efficient. You're gonna end up with some dips and rises. It's just inevitable in a van, but you wanna think about how do I make it trend downward the entire time? Now, this is an absolute mess right now, so ignore 95% of this. The tubing that we're gonna be using for our gray water is actually this stuff right here. This is called flexible PVC. You can get it at your local hardware store. I will also put a link to it in the description below. But what I like about it is it's really nice and flexible. It doesn't kink nearly as easily as that vinyl tubing. I was thinking about using that vinyl tubing. It's a pretty good option still, but I think this is just gonna be a little bit easier. In order to make connections with this stuff, I am going to be using barbed fittings. Now, these are the exact same fittings that you use for the vinyl tubing. You're not technically supposed to use barbed fittings for the flexible PVC. PVC. You're supposed to use regular PVC fittings with like the primer and the glue, but our gray water is completely unpressurized and it's a lot easier to work with these fittings than it is to glue up a bunch of stuff. So as for gray water, ignore all these wires here. We have our regular drain from the sink. This is just a little $10 drain you can get on Amazon. It comes with this brass nut here. And then I just bought this piece from the hardware store. So this is just a regular 90 degree sink drain thingy. And this thing fits up against the bottom of the sink drain. There's a little plastic or rubber washer. And then you just tighten this brass fitting down. It creates a nice watertight seal. We've also routed our drain hose up through the side here. In order to get this 90 connected to that piece right there, we have another small segment of that flexible PVC piping with another barbed fitting. And then on the side of the barbed fitting and on to this plastic piece directly, we're gonna use this flexible PVC connector. It's like soft rubber and it has two of those hose clamps on it. So one on that side, one on the barbed side, straight down here, and we should have pretty good flow of water. So we have our gray water drain hooked up. It's connected to the bottom of the sink there, goes out behind the fridge, and then it comes out into the tall cabinet here, down through the bottom of the floor where we drilled those holes. And now we have the fun part, which is mounting the gray water tank and connecting that hose to it. This water tank is designed to fit in the spare tire carrier on sprinter vans. Since I have moved my spare tire to the back of the van, I now have space to use the spare tire carrier cage right here for that water tank. Installing this tank is insanely easy. It takes about five minutes. All we have to do is release this spare tire carrier. Literally the same process as swapping a spare tire, which you can look up on YouTube. This here is what it looks like when it is installed. So the way that our gray water system works underneath the van is it comes out of the big hole that we drilled into this gray water line here, and then it goes back into the gray tank. And then the gray water tank is pretty simple. It has three connections in total. First one is the flexible PVC, which comes out of the bottom of the sink. That goes into the top of the gray water tank so that it can fill it up. The second connection is the gray water drain where we have our electronic ball valve here. Link in the description below. That allows us to drain the gray tank from inside the van so that we don't have to physically walk out there and turn a ball valve, which literally just drains onto the ground. There are appropriate places to dump this or I will just put a bucket under here. The third connection is on the other side of the gray water tank here and it is our venting pipe. This is exactly the same thing as the vent tube that is on the freshwater tank. It's just a little bit shorter. We have the same thing here where we have two check valves, one which allows air or water out and one which allows air or water in to keep the pressure inside the tank completely neutral. So one of the most important aspects of any off-grid water system is the ability to fill your tank so that you can go off-grid. Now, right now we have this temporary solution set up so that I could test things out but we do wanna build something that's a bit more permanent. The strategy that I'm going for is very similar to our electric inlet right here, which is recessed and hidden underneath the van so that you can't see it unless you're actually looking for it. Which reminds me, I still gotta close this guy. For the water inlet, we are gonna put it on this side underneath the van, and we are gonna use these parts right here. This is the actual water fill inlet. It's from a company called Aquor. I've also got a plastic waterproof and dustproof box which I've cut a hole in the back of. The way that this inlet works is actually pretty interesting. It comes with this kind of quick disconnect mechanism. So all you gotta do once it's installed is twist it in, it locks, 
It also has a valve on it. You can put your hose on this side and fill it with ease. Links to this stuff in the video description. Between these three parts and a couple pieces of aluminum that I'm gonna cut so that it hangs down at the perfect location, we are going to install this bad boy. We have completed the inlet here. Here is what it looks like from the backside. We literally just cut a big quarter inch piece of aluminum off, bolted it to the factory bolt holes in the van. We did not have to drill those. And then we bolted the box to the aluminum. We have our inlet coming through the back. There's a little rubber gasket in between it and the plastic here to make it waterproof. And then of course we have our Propex fitting on the back, which just goes up into the hole in the floor into the top right corner of our water tank. It is perfectly angled in this waterproof box so no dust or road grime will ever get in here. All we gotta do is lift this bad boy up and then we can take our little quick connect and we have a place to connect our garden hose here that we can fill our fresh water tank. Here is another angle that you guys might be interested in. Don't worry, we will be putting some conduit around these wires. I am just mid construction right now and have not had time to do that. And I have to say that I really like this Aquar inlet here with the quick connection thing. It just makes it so convenient. Next up, we are going to hook up all of the electrical connections. They are all 12 volt connections except for the water heater, which is a hundred 20 volt connection. I'm not going to cover this in great detail. I have an entire 40 minute long video that I just released a few weeks ago that goes in detail on all the electronics in this van. We're going to rig these things up and test them out. Okay, so we finally got all four of these devices hooked up properly. The first one is our water level sensor here. This is a sensor that's in the tank, reads a value out to this thing so we can determine how much water we have left. We've got our water pump here. Up here, we have a kind of sketchily mounted on off switch for our water heater. Now this obviously is not a regular on off switch. This one is on a timer. And my last van, every single time I turned on the water heater, I wanted to turn it on for a certain amount of time and then not have it run like let's say overnight. There were times when I actually forgot to turn it off and it drained my batteries. So instead of putting the water heater on a simple on off switch, we have it on this timer switch, which goes from zero to 60 minutes. So if we wanna heat up a tank of water for the shower, all we gotta do is turn it to something like 25. We can take a drive or do whatever else we need to do. And when this thing goes off, we are ready to go with a full tank of hot water. My last water heater took about 15, 20 minutes to heat the full tank of water. We'll see how long this one takes. Probably about the same if I had to guess. Then the last thing we hooked up is probably one of my favorites as far as convenience features in the van. And that is the automatic gray valve. This is a dual pole, dual throw switch. So we have a closing of the valve on that direction. The middle is off and then the opening of the valve in this direction. The great part about this particular automatic valve and the way that we have it set up is it draws virtually no power. When it's on, it draws less than an amp of power. And then once it is either closed or opened fully, the power is cut off completely and it drains nothing. There are links to all of these electrical components in the description below if you're interested. So now we've got the whole fresh water system hooked up. We've got the gray water system hooked up. We've done all of the electronics and we have only one thing left. And that is to test out the system and see if it all works. Now, normally it's better to test things as early as you possibly can. But in our case, that's not quite how it worked. And you know, it's a little bit more dramatic to do everything and then see if it all breaks. So I'm gonna fill up the freshwater tank now and then we are gonna see the moment of truth. We got the hose hooked up to our little quick connect water fill there and our tank's getting filled right up. She be feeling. So nervous, so nervous, so nervous, so nervous, so nervous. Oh, well, you can see that filling up or did I actually leave that open? Well, at least it's working as intended. Crikey. All right, everything seems to have stabilized. Let's turn the pump on and pressurize the system. Oh my God, please pray for me. Well, here goes nothing. Hmm, wrong switch. It's going. Okay, it's pumping. I hear it going through the system here. I hear it going into the water heater. Not seeing any major leaks yet. I'm very, very nervous, but I don't see any water coming out, especially none out of these opener fittings, which is good because that's pretty much what this is all made out of. Let's see, I think it's probably filling the water heater right now, which is why not a lot's happening. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. Okay, so far the only visible leak was actually on this part of the water heater, which 
came with the water heater. I actually didn't even install this at all. I tightened it down and I think it stopped leaking. Let's try it again and see what happens. Okay, I found two more small leaks. One of them is actually on this hand tightenable connector into the accumulator tank here. And another one, it's actually from the opener here. I think this is my fault because there's a ton of strain on this particular connection. They aren't at the right height to be seated properly. I'm gonna try and reduce the stress on this connection. I think that'll fix it. As for that one, I'm just gonna try and tighten it up. Okay, I just learned this lesson the hard way. If you're gonna cut and make alterations, even if your pump is off and you let the sink drain for a couple minutes to try and get all the pressure out, if your pipes are this long, there's still gonna be a lot of water in them. More than a towel can hold, more than two towels can hold. I recommend buckets. All I could find was cups. And after a short sprint to my house, it's confirmed that I need to start working out again. God damn it, I sliced myself with the <laughs> utility knife. Amazon should never hire me to pack and ship boxes. I would be awful. Is it filming? Did you press it this time? Is it pressed? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Okay. Got in a fight with a box cutter and uh, it's one and out in favor of the box cutter. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty lightheaded. All right, I probably need to stop working and just take a break for a little bit. All right, we double bagged it, which is also a good strategy in other aspects of life. So do you guys think the heat get all fixed this? All right, so we have reduced as much stress as we possibly can on this joint right here. You can see that it's kind of awkward because these two are a different height. So I just kind of did this little whoop dee here. I also tightened down these clamps and used a wrench to tighten the hand tightenable fitting there. Round two, fight. Here we go. We have some pretty good news right now. The water pump has stopped on its own. What that means is I have the water pump on and it has fully pressurized the system i'm not seeing any leaks so i don't see any leaks on that section right there i also don't see any leaks on this little roundabout that we just did the heater leak seems to be fixed i'm gonna leave this pressurized for a little bit here and see if we can spot any slower leaks but right now we're looking pretty dang good all right i had a very slow leak in this right here remember when i told you guys don't put plastic female over brass male this is temporary right this is just till i get my shower in i was like oh i can cheap out and get the plastic fittings for now should have listened to my own advice. Cool thing is you can't hear the pump on right now, but when I turn the water on, it goes for a couple seconds. And then our pump just ticked on because we used enough pressure in the system. So if I shut the faucet off, we'll continue to pressurize the system. And then it turns off because we've reached the right amount of pressure. So that's regular, pretty solid. And that is on stream mode. It's going like, I don't know, maybe 10 feet. It's probably like 50% more water pressure than my last one. And that is because the water pump that I got this time is the SureFlow 4048 or whatever. That is linked in the description below. It's louder, but it's a lot more pressure. So kind of depends on what you want. We have also had zero leaks in the gray water system. That seems to be working just fine kind of as expected because there's almost no water pressure in there at all. But something that is super exciting and different than my last van, because I used the inch and a quarter pipe, is when I turn the water on and let the water run, it's actually draining faster than it's filling. We've had it running for about 30 seconds now just to prove to you that it does indeed drain faster. Look at that, can't fill this no matter how hard I try. A lot of people will put a separate water pump on the gray water side just to get the water to the gray tank. And in my opinion, that kind of sucks. Like you have to turn on a water pump anytime you use the sink just to make sure that the sink drains or you have to set up some sort of auto detect so that it runs on its own. Having a gravity drain is just so much simpler. And the very best part about this is now every single time I get my hands dirty while I'm working on the van, I can wash my hands right here in the sink. The small things, I'm telling you. So we've now left the system on for 24 hours in total. Came outside this morning and there are no leaks, which means believe it or not, I think we can call this project completely done. And it's kind of funny because the only like real value add from this is the sink. 
So <laughs> having running water in a sink is something we definitely take for granted. The water pressure is really high. We have that massive three-stage filtration system, so we don't have to worry about any of our water getting contaminated. We have a nice water fill that's recessed underneath the van, an awesome water heater with that timer. We've got our great water tank with the automatic valve, so we don't have to go outside to drain it. Could not be more happy with how this turned out. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and I also hope that you learned something from it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.